पूछ सकते हैं तो आइए आगाज करते हैं आज के प्रोग्राम का लेट्स मूव ऑन टू अस्ट क्वेश्चन हमारा जो सवाल है वो हमारे टीन एजर्स के लिए काफ़ी अहम है बिकॉज वी ऑल नो अ लॉट ऑफ टीन एजर्स आर गोइंग थ्रू मेंटल हेल्थ इश्यूज द क्वेश्चन इज आई एम स्ट्रगलिंग विद मेंटल हेल्थ हाउ कैन आई प्योरीफाई माई सोल एंड माइंड एंड गेट रिड ऑफ ऑब्सेसिव ओवर थिंकिंग एंड बैड मेंटल हेल्थ इस सवाल के जवाब को हमने जाना है सिस्टर सैदा मेहदिया से जो यूनाइटेड किंगडम के लंडन से ताल्लुक रखती है आइए देखते हैं सिस्टर का क्या कहना है अवदबिल्लिमिनशैतवानजीम बसमीम फ़ातमत व अबी व बली है व बनी है व सरमस्त आईफ़ी है बे अददी माहत बेअलमकाम हुसैन व अली इबन हुसैन व अलादुलसैन व अलाबुलसैन माई डे ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स इन शाह टुडे वी लुक एट दी ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन एंड द ब्रीफ टॉपिक ऑफ मेंटल हेल्थ एंड इस्लाम नाउ इस्लाम इज़ अ रिलीजन ऑफ पीस एंड इट एम्फिसाइज ऑन द वेल बींग द ओवरऑल वेल बींग ऑफ अ ह्यूमन बींग बी एट द फिजिकल वेल बींग द इमोशनल वेल बींग द स्पिरिचुअल वेल बींग एंड द mental well-being now mental health and mental well-being is important for all of us for all our lives and for all our well-being and especially in order to gain closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the the holy ahlul bayt alayhim assalam now it is important to note that i am not an expert in this field my expertise lies in other areas however mental health is such a subject and mental health is 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 such a uh, discussion where we should be having open discussions and open forums at, on a safe platform where those who are suffering from mental health are able to seek advice and are able to seek the help that they need from professionals it is not something to be shunned away it is not a taboo it is not something to be embarrassed about for example if i had a physical ailment I would reach out to my family to my friends to my loved ones and I would perhaps tell them what I was suffering from and I would ask them to make the as for me in the same way if somebody is suffering from mental health they should feel open and they should feel the the ability within our communities especially we should be open as a community to welcome to discuss what the individual is going through so that they can get the help and that they can get the the guidance that they that they need and that they so deserve as well however today we look at mental health in islam and we look at the ways that islam gives us guidance we look at the ways that how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the holy ahlul bayt have given us guidance in order to for us to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the holy ahlul bayt alayhum assalam in order for us to improve our iman in order for us to improve our faith and one of the greatest things is prayer is ibada is dhikr is recitation of the holy quran is recitation of the words of the du- of the duas of the ahlul bayt alayhum assalam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the holy quran in surah 39 verse 53 has said Do not despair of the mercy of Allah and remembrance of Allah one of the best forms of re- of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembrance and doing prayer is doing your your prayer your salat be it wajib salat as well as your mustahab salat if you can but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the holy quran in surah 20 verse 14 has said and maintain the prayer for my remembrance and he then says in surah 29 verse 45 where he says indeed the prayer prevents indecencies and wrongs and the remembrance of allah is surely greater now our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has narrated in a narration where he says the power of just that small bismillahir rahmanir rahim bismillahir rahmanir rahim where we say every day in our wajib salah where we are encouraged to recite daily before we start an act 
before we start to, before we leave our house in the morning, before we recite the Holy Quran, before we do any act of the day, it is recommended to say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Because every act that we are doing where we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that act the the mercy and the bounty and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter that act and we get multiple thawab and reward and barakah in that act. And our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrates beautifully and he says, surely by reciting Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, he says the reward of this is 5,000 ruby palaces that will be built for the person in Jannah. Each palace will have 1,000 chambers made of pearls and in each chamber has 70,000 thrones of emerald and each throne has 70,000 carpets made from special fabric and upon each carpet is seated a Hurul Ain. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad says, for this reward, to come upon the person who says Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, they have to recite this with conviction and faith. And Imam Ali Radha alayhi salam has said that a true sign of a believer, of a mu'min, is one who recites Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim loudly. So surely it is in our benefit for a way for us to gain closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by reciting Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim loudly in every act that we do, not just when we recite our salah, but in every act that we do daily. So inshallah, we can incorporate this into our daily lives in order to improve our faith, in order to improve our iman, in order to grow, grow closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a simple tasbih of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, a tasbih of a hundred Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahims will suffice inshallah in the day. There's also a beautiful narration by a Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam who has who is narrated to Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari. And he says, he, he says to Jabir, he says, Oh Jabir, would you like to know the best gift that has been given to mankind and the greatest, best surah amongst all the surahs in the Holy Quran? And amongst all the surahs in the Holy Quran, the one of the best surahs is Surah Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. This is one of the best surahs that we can recite. And Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam has said that a believer who recites 70 Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim upon the area of his body that he feels strain upon, be it a physical ailment or even a mental ailment, if you recite Surah Fatiha, Surah Alham 70 times upon that area of your body or your mental well-being, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to give you shifa through the power of this Surah Fatiha, Surah Alham, inshallah. So in this short clip, we have looked at just a few pearls of wisdom, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these gifts in order to grow closer to him and in order to grow closer to our holy Ahlul Bayt, alayhum as and inshallah help us with, ever, with whatever difficulties, inshallah, we are facing in our life. Insha'Allah, we gain closer to the holy Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi, Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Faraj al Sharif. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah, sister, thank you so very much. Definitely, dua is important, but we also need to consult a professional. Let's move on to the next question. Our next question is that I have been in the past few years, and I have been in the past few years. और मेरे उनसे अलग होने के बाद जब मैं उनसे दूर चली गई तो एक साल के बाद उनका इंतकाल हो गया तो क्या परवरदिगार आलम रोजे कयामत मुझे इस चीज का अजाब देगा सजा देगा अब अगर मैं अल्लाह से माफी मांगना चाहूं तो मुझे क्या करना चाहिए इस सवाल के जवाब को हमने जाना है ब्रदर सलमान नामदार से जो कि टर्की के शहर इस्तानबुल से ताल्लुक रखते हैं اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم وبه نستعين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين ما بعد جو سوال پوچھا گیا ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ اگر ایک خاتون 13 سال تک اپنے شوہر کی تیمارداری کرنے کے بعد اس سے الگ ہو جائے 
اور اس کے ایک سال کے بعد اس کا شوہر اس دنیا سے چلا جائے تو ایسی صورت میں کیا اس عورت پر کوئی گناہ عائد ہوا ہے اور اگر گناہ عائد ہوا ہے تو پھر اس کا استغفار اس کا ازالہ جا سکتا ہے تو اس سوال میں دو صورت نکل کر سامنے آتی ہے کہ اگر یہ خاتون اپنے شوہر سے طلاق لے کر جدا ہوئی ہے یا نہیں یہ بغیر طلاق کے جدا ہو گئی ہے تو اس صورت میں کہ جب خاتون اپنے شوہر سے بغیر طلاق کے جدا ہو جائے تو یہ شرعن صحیح نہیں ہے اور اس کا ازالہ اس طرح سے ہو سکتا تھا کہ وہ اپنے شوہر سے معافی طلب کرتی معافی مانگتی لیکن چونکہ اس کا شوہر اس دنیا سے گزر گیا تو ضروری ہے کہ وہ استغفار کرے اب یہ استغفار کئی صورت میں ہو سکتا ہے سب سے پہلے تو بندہ خود اپنے پروردگار کی بارگاہ میں استغفار کرے اور اپنے اس گناہ کے بارے میں اپنے پروردگار سے معافی طلب کرے دوسری چیز جو ہو سکتی ہے مثلا کہ ہر نماز کے بعد جو ہے وہ ایک استغفار کی تسبیح پڑھے اور اس کے علاوہ وہ چیزیں مثلا کہ جو اس کے شوہر کو پسند تھی وہ صفات کے جو صفات عالیہ تھے ان صفات کو اپنے اندر لے کر آئے تاکہ اس کا شوہر اس سے راضی ہو اور وہ چیزیں کہ جو اس کے شوہر سے مثلا چھوٹ گئی تھی مثلا اگر اس کی نماز چھوٹ گئی تھی یا اس کے روزے باقی تھے تو وہ کوئی ایسا انتظام کرے کہ جس سے اس کی نماز ادا ہو جائے اس کے روزے ادا ہو جائے تاکہ اس کے عوض میں اس کا شوہر جو ہے وہ اس سے راضی ہو جائے اور وہ اپنے پروردگار سے طلب مغفرت کرتی رہے کہ جو اس سے یہ گناہ ہوا ہے پروردگار عالم ان تمام کاموں کے بدلے میں اسے بخش دے تو یہ اس صورت میں ہے کہ اگر یہ خاتون بغیر طلاق کے اپنے شوہر سے بیماری کی وجہ سے جو ہے وہ جدا ہو گئی اور اس نے طلاق بھی نہیں لیا لہٰذا اگر شوہر اس کا نان و نفقہ اور وہ تمام شرائط کہ جو شوہر کے اوپر تھے وہ اگر انجام دے رہا تھا اور اس کے باوجود بھی یہ خاتون اس سے جدا ہو گئی تو اسے استغفار کرنا چاہیے ایک اور صورت ہے کہ یہ خاتون جو ہے وہ شرعی طور پر اس سے طلاق لے کر جدا ہوئی ہے تو ایسی صورت میں اس پر کوئی کفارہ یا کوئی گناہ نہیں اس نے انجام دیا ہے لہٰذا استغفار کی بھی ضرورت نہیں ہے لیکن اخلاقی طور پر بالفرض اگر صرف ریزن اور وجہ یہ رہی ہو کہ وہ بیماری کے سبب اپنے شوہر سے طلاق لے کر جدا ہو گئی تو اسے چاہیے تھا کہ اپنے پروردگار سے اجر لینے کے لیے وہ مزید صبر کرتی اور احادیث میں روایات میں متعدد جگہ پر کئی روایات بیان ہوئی ہے کہ ایسی خاتون کے جو مثلا اپنے شوہر کا خیال رکھتی ہے اس کے سخت وقت میں اس کے آزمائش کے وقت میں تو ان کی جزا اور ان کا اجر پروردگار کی بارگاہ میں کتنا ہو سکتا ہے تو شر ان تو اس نے کوئی گناہ انجام نہیں دیا لیکن اخلاقی طور پر اسے صبر کرنا چاہیے تھا اور اگر نہیں کیا تو مثلا وہ اپنے شوہر کے لیے کچھ اچھے کام انجام دے اس کے لیے مثلا قرآن یا فاتحہ یا ایسی اور جو چیزیں ہو سکتی ہے کہ جو اسے انجام دینا چاہیے تاکہ جو اس نے یہ کوتا ہی کر دی مثلا تو وہ جو ہے اس کا ازالہ ہو جائے لیکن شرعن یہ گناہگار نہیں ہے واخر دعوانا ان الحمد للہ رب العالمین جزاک اللہ برادر یقیناً ہمارا جو پروردگار عالم ہے اللہ ہے وہ غفور الرحیم ہے وہ معاف کرنے والا ہے تو آئیے بڑھتے ہیں ہمارے آج کے پروگرام کے آخری سوال کی طرف ویل ویورز ہمارا جو اگلا سوال ہے یہ ہمارے سارے ان برادرز کے لیے ہیں جو سموکنگ کو صحیح سمجھتے ہیں سو دیکھتے ہیں ہمارا سوال کیا ہے آئی ہیو ہرڈ ڈیٹ سگریٹس آر ناٹ کنسڈرڈ حرام ان اسلام از دیٹ ٹرو If so, what is the reason as they are bad for our health and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid anything that are harmful to our body? یہ سوال کچھ اس طرح کا ہے کہ ان کا کہنا ہے کہ انہوں نے سنا ہے کہ سگریٹ سموکنگ سگریٹ کو پینا اسلام نے حرام قرار نہیں دیا ہے ٹھیک ہے اور یہ ایک ایسی آرگیومنٹ ہے جو اکثر ہمارے برادرز یوز کرتے ہیں یا سگریٹ سموکرز یوز کرتے ہیں جب وہ سگریٹ کو پیتے ہیں تو یہ کہتے ہیں کہ سگریٹ حرام تھوڑی نہ ہے ٹھیک ہے تو کیا یہ صحیح ہے اور اگر یہ صحیح ہے تو ہم جانتے ہیں کہ اللہ نے کہا کہ وہ کوئی بھی چیز جو ہماری باڈی کے لیے ٹھیک نہیں ہے اچھی نہیں ہے ہارمفل ہے وہ حرام ہے تو اس بات کے لیے آپ کیا کہیں گے اس سوال کے جواب کو ہم نے ڈیٹیل میں جانا ہے برادر صفدر رضیم ماسٹر سے جو کہ پورچگل کے شہر لسبن سے تعلق رکھتے ہیں آئیے دیکھتے ہیں ان کا کیا کہنا ہے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی سیدنا و نبینا محمد و علی الہ الطیبین الطاہرین واللعنۃ الدائمہ الابدیہ علی اعدائی مجمعین لا قیام یوم الدین 
Assalamu alaikum, my beloved ones, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The question which has reached, I have heard that cigarettes are not considered haram. Is it true? If so, what is the reason as they are bad for our health and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbids, uh, forbids anything that uh, is harmful to our body? The answer to this, uh, I'm going to just mention, first of all, uh, the ayah al-Qur'ani, the verse of the Qur'an, uh, that is a general verse which is applicable for any situation which is uh, which applies on it, such as, this is in Surah Al-Baqarah 195, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَأَنفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Spend on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of Allah, for the love of Allah. وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ That means do not put yourself by your hands, that means by yourself, with you intentionally, deliberately, voluntarily, put yourself in halak. Halak is something which is destruction. Okay? Like serious harm. So, our ulamas, our fuqaha, they divide the harm into normal harm, serious harm. For example, if somebody will go and work uh, in cold winter, in the snow weather, it's harmful, but it's not serious harmful. So he will go and the intellectual society will not call them, this guy is crazy because he might become sick. But then when he is sick, and he knows if he's going to work in this cold winter, which is snowing. Same example. But here the scenario is different. The scenario, the person is sick or he is weak or he has the potential to go into the stage of serious harm. Like he might have coma, he might be hospitalized, he might have serious problem. That is serious harm. But if he goes normally to the work and it's harsh cold winter and he will become like a common cold or something like that, that is harm, but not serious harm. Maybe my example, you can have different examples, but I just want to explain that there is harm and there's serious harm. So our ulamas, they derive from the this ayah and other evidences from the hadith that the prohibited harm on an individual is the one which is which causes serious harm. Okay, having said that, smoking, does it cause harm or serious harm or no harm? In this case, I have to categorize, categorize the smoking into three things. Serious harm to self. Mild harm to self, harm to others, be it serious or mild. When you smoke in front of other people, that is prohibited because you are not self-harming. Even if you are smoking one cigarette, which will not harm you, but you are harming others. You cannot cause harm to others, be it serious or non-serious. That is, that is prohibited. That means smoking in public places where people might become harmed. For example, there, there are people I know, one cigarette they smoke from, from their friends, they get headache, they get problems. So, so that, that, is, that area is prohibited. You're not allowed to cause harm to others who are respectful, okay, uh, in the community. Because they're also, uh, like for example, animal, if there is animal around you, Okay, cat around you and you smoke in front of that cat. So that is different than causing harm to a respectful creature, that respectful human being, uh, which may be seriously harmed or mild harm. You are not allowed to cause harm to others. That's point number one. Point number two, when it come to comes to smoking, our ulama, especially Sayyidi Sistani, I'm going to read the fatwa of Sayyidi Sistani here, okay, from his website. So he was asked about the smoking. His ruling is, it is, it is harmful إِذَا أَدَّى إِلَىٰ ضَرَرٍ بَلِيغٍ بَلِيغ is serious harm. Okay? So if smoking is causes serious harm to you, then it is prohibited. Now here comes the issue of how many cigarettes. It depends. For me, 
one cigarette will cause me serious harm. So for me, it is haram. For you, if one cigarette is not going to cause you serious harm, you can smoke. Two, smoke. Ten cigarettes are going to cause you serious harm, then it's prohibited. So it is an individual issue rather than communal. Communal, we said, inside the community, if you are going to cause harm to others, that's prohibited. But for yourself, if you are in your own room or in the smoking area or whatever, you as an individual, if you are going to smoke a cigarette that is going to cause you serious harm, it is prohibited on you. If it is uh, go not going to cause you serious harm, it is permissible. Okay, so that is why it's individual. Another thing, uh, I'm a professional in respiratory therapy. Cigarette has harms as the harm of sugar, as the harm of any other things which goes beyond the limit becomes harmful uh, consumption, anything. So in here also, like for example, sugar, if you consume so much sugar, which causes serious harm, like serious diabetes, uh, serious heart attack, serious whatever, cholesterol, then you should not, we're not talking about smoking, you should not eat sugar in a way that it may cause you serious harm. Okay, now there are people, <clears throat> they will do physical activities, they will do exercise. So according to my experience and according to the professionals, they say our lungs, naturally, they are able to get, get rid of the junk which goes inside. So if you smoke one cigarette, for example, and you do exercise, especially running, running and doing that where your lung starts to huff and puff. So when the lung starts to huff and puff, the alveoli, the lung starts to inflate. When the lung starts to inflate, it throws in the lung cavity all the filth which is in the alveoli. And then you get sputum and then you get cough and you, you spit the filth out or it goes inside esophagus, inside your, uh, inside your stomach and you get rid of it. So, so our body can get rid of the smoke which went inside and the amount is not seriously harmful. If somebody does regular, he will be caused, he will be harmed, but long term, after long time, because this nicotine, sometimes it stays in the lung. Yes, you got rid of most of it. You got rid of most of the junk of smoke, but then still some amounts, they go inside the cell. What will you do with that? But that causes long term, after long time, serious harm, but not instant serious harm or not on, uh, on, on short run. So if you're able to take care of your health properly, physical activities and all those kind of things, people they used to, they say, people they used to live 80 years and they were smoking. Yeah, but look, they did not have cars. They did not have air conditions. They did not have all these things and they were like in constant activities. So their lungs would, would, would spit the junk out and there will be no serious harm. There will be mild harm, but not serious harm. So you got the idea of serious harm, haram, even if it is for one cigarette. Mild harm, even if you take packs and you do physical activities and it does not cause you serious harm. So you need to check, make a, uh, make a checkup and do some PFT, that pulmonary uh, lung, lung testing. You, you need to do that to let the doctor tell you how much is your capacity and how much is your potential to smoke if you really love to smoke. Now, some scholars, they had a fourth area in the smoking. They had this addiction. Why addiction? Because addiction causes serious harm. So that's why, as you will see sometimes, say this is Tani mentioned this word. Other scholars, they mentioned, what is this? If you are a beginner, you should not smoke if it is if it causes serious harm. Again, it boils down to the serious harm. If you are addicted and stopping the cigarette, smoke, stopping smoking is going to cause you serious harm. So that means you are between two things. Then they tell you to continue but reduce the amount. So that is the meaning of beginner. You have yet not become addicted. Because there are people, they ask Sayyid al-Khuyi If I stop smoking, I will get headache, I'll faint. 
So that is a serious harmful scenario. Falling down, fainting, that's not a mild harm. Mild harm could be headache or something, but falling down, knocking off, <laughs> losing conscious or getting severe headache, you know, and might cause serious harm. So that's why they said, okay, now you cannot stop smoking. You continue smoking because stopping is serious harm, but try to wean off, reduce the amount slowly, slowly. So these are the aspects of smoking uh, in the sight of our Maharaja and say the Sistani also echoes the, these things. Serious harm, I'm summary, summarizing. Uh, serious harm, prohibited, regardless of the amount. It is an individual issue. Individual variances uh, apply here. Mild harm, you can smoke. It's better to avoid because still there's a long-term harm. Okay, those things stay in the cell some, and, and they might pile up and God forbid they might cause, might cause concern. Cancer. We are not definite because many people, they smoke, but they, are, they don't get cancer. So again, you need to do your medical checkup before uh, deciding to continue to stop to whatever. And then the third one, beginner and continue uh, addicted. If you're a beginner, stop it. If it causes you serious harm, back to the point number one. If you are, if you are addicted and stopping it is going to cause serious harm, then reduce it. Okay, to reduce the harm uh, which you might uh, 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 get into it. And then the, the, the first masala which I mentioned, harm to others. You are not allowed to harm others regardless. Like we, we, we see that we saw the fatawas in the COVID era also, that COVID, okay, you protect yourself and protect others. Okay, if you have immunity, maybe the one who's sitting beside you does not have immunity. So it was all about the immunity and the same rulings of immunity apply here. That is how some people can tolerate one cigarette, some people can tolerate 10 cigarettes, some people cannot tolerate any cigarette and they get into serious harm. I hope this ruling is clear. Inshallah, we'll meet in our next session of Q&A. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much brother for explaining so very well Anything in excess is harmful to us and should be avoided. We pray to Almighty Allah to help our brothers to quit this habit and get rid of this bad habit. Well, if you have any questions in your life, any questions that you want to know, then our contact details are on TV screen. You can send us your questions and we will try to reach you to the questions. We would also like to thank all our scholars who participated in our program. Thank you for your precious time and efforts. With this, the team of Global Islamic View, please join us with the channel Win. Thank you for your time and thank you for your time.